My dogs completely lose their mind when I blow that. Um, all right, let's do this. It's time for show. And it begins in 3, 2, 1. Coming up on TMS, the toothpick strikes again. Sorry about, uh, sorry about the toilet paper, Canada. Nice, nice catch. That was good. Yeah. Then I will have to take the golf ball. You can eat that meat just fine. Son, you might want to get licked to death. No, you might get <laughs> licked to death. Oh, I don't know. Leave one in there. <laughs> Major spoilers. Trek nerd and more on this episode of The Morning Stream. So when someone in your family has fever of a cold or flu, take your doctor's advice. Reduce that fever with aspirin. Remember... Bayer aspirin for adults and for children is the best aspirin the world has ever known. So are they offended by what they see in the sex shop windows and outside the cinemas? The Morning Stream with Scott and Brian and a caveman. everyone and welcome back to the morning stream it's february 25th 2018 19 19 i'm scott johnson with brian Ibbett. hi brian oh hi scott hello 2018 19 got that 20... date just right <laughs> uh welcome back everybody i hope you got that yeah. oscar stink off of you over uh, from last night and um mm -hmm. you know back to your normal week we got a monday here going on and i uh, can't believe it's already monday again i feel like time is just racing past me at an alarming rate yeah i don't yeah. like it my back hurts uh i stepped in a big wow. big dog and poo. those kids are too loud yeah, and those <laughs> kids are too loud and i stepped in a big dog poo this morning while i was out walking rainer oh no yeah it wasn't her poo either it was some other dog well yeah because you clean up after rainer you, damn straight some schmuck who doesn't uh, clean up after themselves. that's right i even have on the little handle for the for the leash i have yeah. a um uh, two bags tied to it all the, at all times. Mm. So mm -hmm. if I need to use one, I have a bag and I just pull it off of there and I'm good. If I use both bags, I'll stop at a bag station and take a couple more and time to the thing. I'm sure. never without a bag is the point. But yeah, some we've guy got one of those, uh, just... We get a little black capsule thing that clips onto the leash and it's filled with like a little roller, of, like a, a roller of a bunch of little bags. We have that too, but I never think to grab it and use it. Oh, really? Yeah, it's why. just permanently attached. Well, not permanently. I mean, basically, we tied a knot in the leash and then had the thing cut through it. Oh, look at this. Amazon is, has parked in front of my house. Are they delivering to me or delivering to the people across the street? You know, I used, I used to think that I got a lot of stuff yeah. from Amazon. Yeah. Uh, seeing, yep, going across the street. Seeing how many things the people across the street get. It's like, wow, okay. Uh, it's an actually, Amazon, if you're looking for a, a second uh, distribution facility, you should probably just put it right there yeah. and save yourself a bunch of driving. Is that a, is it an actual marked Amazon truck? or? A... No, well, it's the one that they use. Uh, let me see. I think it is. No, it's like deliver.com, but it's like the colors of the Amazon logo, the uh, black and orange. Okay. It's not UPS anymore. It's like... Uh, that's them using uh, Amazon. That's, that's them showing Amazon, hey, we're... We're, look at us. We're awesome. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's like wearing your mega hat to a rally. And they know, <laughs> and, <laughs> well, and wearing a red hat to a rally that maybe doesn't say mega, but but still says, I kind of support you, but I've got my own thing going. Yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> here for I'm here for the fringe benefits of <laughs> right, association. Exactly. exactly. I might support another uh, another candidate that also likes the color red, but <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> Amazon you're, right now. Yeah, Amazon, you're the biggest shipper right now. But if someone's bigger, we're cool with you too. Whoever you are, come on yeah, in. Exactly. We'll, uh, exactly. <laughs> we'll chameleonize ourselves. Hey, I had a I had a funny thing happen over the dumb weekend. I would um, hope so. Which overall is kind of a dumb weekend. We're still we we're gone. We've gone long with this floor stuff. The guy who's doing yeah. it needed two extra days. It was supposed to be done oh. Saturday. So, and he showed up late on Friday. Like I heard the audio yeah. you played for me. Like you recorded just your your. Uh, ambient room noise mm -hmm. and it was like oh it was horrible we couldn't that's why we couldn't do a yeah. show on the pm yeah. we, it was yeah. so loud you guys like he there was a little bit of this on there will be dungeons on saturday but not nearly as much so it was only about 10 minutes worth of a three-hour show uh and i had to keep muting myself but those people got a real taste of it like it is so when he's hammering right above me I, it's, it's deafening loud 
It was horrifying. Yeah. And the way it would have worked Friday, it was that way for the entirety of the show. So I was like, we're not doing, we can't do this. This is a bad, yeah. that's a bad idea. We can't have a podcast. So that's why we didn't do one Friday. But um, just a dumb weekend. You know, there's beds in places they shouldn't be. And there's furniture and rooms they shouldn't be in. And it just yeah. sucks. Yeah. If you feel like, dude, your life feels unsettled, disheveled. Yes. Yes. And the dogs yes. are freaking out because they think everything's chaos and, and they're probably right. And so everyone's just nuts. Well, anyway, he's back again today. In fact, he's supposed to be here right now i don't know if i hear him yet uh, but he's working on the further end of the house so it shouldn't even if he's banging away i shouldn't pick it up at all it's only when he's Good. right there that it's a problem um so anyway that's happening again today and then again tomorrow again this was all supposed to end saturday i will say he's Ugh. doing a killer job like it looks amazing Oh, good. It's just all taking longer than he thought. And he's not charging more for the extra time. So, I mean, there's good things about this. Mm -hmm. It's just taking way too long. So, anyway, there's all that. But during all of this on Sunday, we had a very busy Sunday, up and down and all over the place uh, during the day. Didn't get home till about 6. As soon as we did, we did a skim from the house and then jumped into wherever the Oscars were from there and went on. And so, uh, but I had this experience where we were like a luncheon thing in the mm -hmm. afternoon. And part of this thing had like little uh, appetizer style food, a lot of cookies and stuff too, but it was like a lot of little cocktail wieners and meatballs Perfect. and and then lots of toothpicks to like poke into these kind of meats. <laughs> so I, you know, I love a good toothpick. Sure. Um, I should check now and see if there's, nope, there's not as one. As do all of your yeah. uh, orifices. <laughs> <laughs> and as do all the people who ate jambalaya about three weeks ago. Anyway, I go in there, I get a toothpick. And uh, I get a bunch of little meats, and I'm eating them with the toothpick. No problem. So yeah. are lots of people. Everyone's doing this. But I, in my infinite wisdom, like I always do, I tucked it behind my ear when I was done. You know, sure. Brian, like I did before the jambalaya. I, sure, yeah. All, we're all familiar with this uh, this technique of yep. yours. This is how I hang on to them for a while in case I need it later. I know it's disgusting. It's a habit of mine, whatever. So I put it on, uh, on my ear like a pencil, and I'm just kind of milling around. And a 12-year-old girl who just happens to be there, comes around the corner, looks at me, gets this face of horror on her face, <laughs> and goes, ew! And I go, what do you mean, ew? She goes, ew! And she points at my head. And I'm like, what is the... I don't know what she's talking about. It wasn't clicking with me that she meant the thing. She goes, yeah. you have a toothpick on your ear. And I said, oh, yeah, look at this. I took it out, and I, exp I tried to explain to her, like, yeah, this is, I'd use these for later, just in case I need it. And as I'm explaining, I realize how stupid this sounds. Right, yeah. <laughs> and how she must just be horrified by this adult man who's got a toothpick behind his ear. So right. I threw it away. I felt, I was embarrassed. So <laughs> sometimes it's a child who teaches us, you know, the right yes, way. Yes, exactly. Out of the minds of their mouths of babes yep. or something like that. Isn't yep. that the phrase? Yep. Kids well, point and laugh at the darndest things. They do, don't uh, they? Oh, good old Art Link letter. Yeah. But just know everyone, I didn't drop it in anyone else's food. I didn't like That's you know, good. do any of that. But uh, it took a 12 year old to shame me into taking it off my ear. Uh, <laughs> Brian, you have a thing written here that as soon as I saw it, I got all excited. <laughs> so do you want to explain what happened here? <laughs> Absolutely. So we had our Oscar party last night. Had some friends over, yeah. and uh, this is the the couple that that basically we always get together with for the Oscars every year. It's it's like a standing uh, arrangement. We'll cook dinner, uh, have dessert. They'll come over, and uh, I'll have Oscar ballots already on the table. Everybody will fill theirs out, and um, nerds. And then we add, yeah, exactly, whatever, whatever. And then we'll add up our points, and winner sometimes gets a prize. Is this the, to, just curious, is this the only time you see these people once a year, or do you see them other no, times No, no, well? no, no, we see okay. them, we see them throughout the year, but, uh, All right. but she is, she is, um, she is a big celebrity, uh, uh, a fan of the whole world of celebrities, like, it's it's probably what you think I am is what really she is. <laughs> well, see, I don't because think I'm you're that really... bad. I think you don't really, you know, like you're not obsessed with like Kardashian. Not at all. Like not that. at all. Yeah. But we'll, you know, it'll be those long cut shots where they show the audience at the Oscars and you see the people in the foreground kind of laughing at whatever somebody on stage is saying. But then there's other people in the background. She'll go, oh, Brian, can you go back? Can you go back? I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. And so I go back, pause. And so I hit the pause like when it's, showing one of these crowd scenes she goes oh look right back there there's hugh jackman who's mm, he sitting with mm, you know it's like mm, that sort of thing yeah which is which is adorable she loves that sort of thing and, and it, it's why it takes us about five hours to go through the three hour sure. oscars telecast <laughs> even with me fast forwarding through commercials and, and whatnot sure 
So they have a son, and uh, their son is about six years old, um, to the age where he can pretty much keep himself somewhat occupied and busy while we're watching the show. It used to be that that basically one of the two parents would um, able to be to watch the Oscars with us and do this while the other parent, uh, usually uh, the dad, would have to sit over on the other side of the room and and uh, play with play with the kid and say, oh, what just happened? What's going on? Oh, okay, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, all right, cool. Who it's, won? Oh, good. Yeah, it's clear that she is the one. Yeah, I get I get that split. That the makes Oscars sense. are for her. Sure, really. I get it. So, uh, but this year he was able to like, you know, hang out with his iPad and uh, get up, go to the bathroom. And, and he comes back and he's got this look on his face. And he, he does this thing where he kind of is looking around the room, but then he kind of goes right up to his... <laughs> Uh, dad and starts whispering mm -hmm. like, <laughs> and all I can make out is and it all started coming out and I'm like what, what's going on because that bathroom our, yeah. our guest bathroom has a long flush you've got to hold the handle down for a second because the water it's like a low flow sure. it's it's i hate it. i know I'm, i do I'm too. replace it as soon as i can america because... dude we have bad toilets it's just well the way and it it's is. and it's my fault because when part of it broke when tristan moved out um i got what i thought was going to be a good replacement and it turned out to be the worst replacement ever of a of an inner toilet flush system yeah yeah so it's like all right i'm just gonna replace this the thing. canadians thought, the right, canadians well, laugh at us by the way because they have these Power flusher, just oh, I know. like they're amazing up there. We we suck anyway. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, it's it's one of those where you don't want that thing flushing while you're sitting on top, sitting on the on the toilet because you feel like it's gonna suck your guts out like a like an airplane toilet. Yeah, like the, all those stories we used to hear, yeah. but not ours. No. no. So we, uh, you know, we hold this thing down. It's like I'm thinking, all right, well, that's probably what the, the situation is that he pushed the button down, didn't hold it down long enough. Some of the water came back up, but it's certainly not enough to like overflow. And then I hear. Then I hear the hissing noise coming from the bathroom. And so Tina, Tina's already up to see what's going on. And uh, um, his mom is already up to go see what's going on. She's, Brian, come here. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I go over there. And I forgot about the other thing that we have going on in the spare bathroom, which is the bidet. Mm. We have one of those little side bidet attachments. So it's a toilet that did not have a bidet, but it had a third-party attachment built into sure, it sure. on the side. He must have thought this was some weird newfangled toilet, uh, did his business, and then uh, hopped off, and then turned the knob to full blast, and a stream of water, a fountain that the likes of which oh, only no. been, have been, has been seen in Las Vegas at the Bellagio, mm. is shooting out out of the top of the toilet and spraying all over the wall, down the wall, the floor is <laughs> it's a pool. Oh my gosh, dude. And <laughs> so, uh, so needless to say, like the parents are like, "Oh my god, oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." They're like grabbing towels, we're grabbing towels and like mopping up, and it's like, "Oh, it's totally fine." We're kind of laughing about it. They're feeling totally bad, but I'm just visualizing. I'm again, I'm hoping that the kid did not turn this thing on while he was sitting on it because that would have actually shot him off the toilet. Mm. But I did notice his hair was all wet. So I think it basically, like, <laughs> he's probably looking down in the toilet and turned the knob and this thing hit <laughs> full force in the, uh, in the face. And clean it probably water, scared him, right? Probably, water, he scared water. him. He got out of there. He just wanted scared to. Scared him, but, but yeah. boy, like, not, you know, didn't uh, come in the room crying or anything. Like, yeah, the toilet just shot me in the face. Shot mm -hmm. me in the face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> shot me in the face. I'm, I am cooperating, Wade. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Well, that so that was fun for you then to deal with that. That was fun. It was a lot of fun cleaning that mess yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. And did you have you to? Know. Did you have to do it? During, I guess you did it during the ceremony, right? You had to. Yeah, it was, this was during the show. Yeah. yeah. So we had a little in memoriam segment of the uh, the toilet bidet system. <laughs> hey, hey, they forgot Ricky J. I know. As soon as I saw that tweet, like, oh my god, they totally did. And that one, oh. listen. Listen, you get you get your Burt Reynolds, you definitely get your Stan Lee in there, and you get your Ricky Jay. And I know a lot of other people passed away this year, uh, Margot Kidder and mm -hmm. and um, uh, Finney and and a few others. But those are the three that most closely connect with the stuff I grew up with. I just don't think it's hard for them to keep a list. Who's no, in charge you go every to year? Yeah, every no, year somebody just go dies. Just Wikipedia. People who died in 2018. Yeah, and just famous, go, All right. famous deaths in 2018. That's all you have to do. It's better yeah. than your list, apparently. Who's in charge of that? Who's writing this down? Dummies. Right. 
They jack right. it up every year. Every year they miss somebody or two or three people or something. And I'm sure there's more than just Ricky J. Some other sort of yeah. half noner. Well, you know? John, John Florida in 1968 says Carol Channing. I forgot that Carol Channing passed away, but that was like a couple of weeks ago, right? It was. It may have been since they. Uh, Created their little iMovie montage, yeah. but Arlie Ermy I forgot about. Vern he Troyer. Have been there. How do you not put Arlie Ermy in there? Okay, right, Vern, Vern Troyer. Vern Troyer Miller. was in like one movie though, so maybe they didn't film. All right, maybe that was. He was in all. Th well, he was in two of the Austin Powers films. Yeah, but is that is that enough? Like, I feel like I've been in at least two Austin Powers movies. <laughs> Is he maybe he was is he only in those two movies? Didn't they have him like uh He was in some porn or something. He did some other well, weird stuff. Well, yeah, you can't really you can't yeah. really count. I guess they're not gonna show a clip of that. Yeah. Ricky I know some people don't know who Ricky J is, Chad. We're not saying that you should know. There's plenty of people people don't know. Dick Miller, that's right, Dick freaking Miller, dude. Dick Miller. Oh, Dunstan checks in, Jingle All the Way, Pinocchio's Revenge, Volcano, Men in Black, uh Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Vern Troyer was in like Okay, he got around. 25. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, he was grip hook. He's just hard to see, you know? <laughs> oh, You're geez. never sure. No, I mean, for real, like, how many times did you know he was in any of those? Probably because he's... <laughs> I don't think it's the fact that, uh, <laughs> that, he, they, that you need to see the movie in 4K to make out <laughs> Vern Troyer. No, I just mean, like, he's in a costume or he's covered in makeup or he's, sure. you know... Yes, right, 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 yes. But he's also very small. Dunstan yes. checks in. Is that a movie? That's a movie. Oh my lord! Um, it's a, a monkey or something, I think. Sure. Hey, you know what else I, I happened uh, because we didn't do a show on Friday? I didn't yeah. give my weigh-in update. Mm, how'd you do? And uh, I am down another three point two pounds. That's so made up for good. the two, the two um, fraction pound fraction weeks, mm -hmm. and then some. Yeah, it's awesome. So I'm actually I'm the lowest weight I've been, uh, boy, since. I don't know, 2012 maybe. Oh, you were that low in 2012. Yeah, I think that's I was awesome. That low in 2012. Yeah, no, that's great. I, um, you know, when I was at my lowest, I was at my high school weight in uh, 2015. I was as, I was as skinny and, and yeah. weightless as high school, and now, no, not so much. There's basically, <laughs> I basically have an extra 40 pound uh, six year old attached to me. Is how right. I think of it. That's you know what? You'll 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 get it off. I promise you. It'll it'll. Uh, uh, you just gotta. We got. We're done with the Oreos. We yeah. have no more new Oreos to try for a while. Yeah. We're good there. Yeah. Uh, uh, get we're getting to the summer months, spring months, where you can get out there and do stuff outdoors more. And yeah, I'm excited about. It. The only reason I went on the big uh, dog thing this morning is because the temperature is like in the high 40s today. Oh, nice. Which uh, we haven't had for a while. It's been super cold, but the wind that was blowing. Yeah, I was freaking. Yeah. Just freezing out there at the wind. It kind of calmed down as I went out there, but um, oh, yeah, Rainbow Bright is right. I need to eat better. You're right. She's not wrong. She's right. Yeah. That is the whole key to it, you know. <sighs> Get the, you know, the the key. The key for me was was two things. It was tracking everything I ate, and mm -hmm. then seeing that big disgusting list, mm -hmm. and then um, having the accountability at the end of every week to go see Justine Bateman and have her tisk 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 me if I. Does, she, I, does uh, she give you any heat? Like, what do they say if you're old? She really doesn't. She actually doesn't. Okay. You know, as a matter of fact, the woman who, uh, AJ, oh, I, that's her real name, Justine Bateman. Yeah. Um, AJ usually is over on the side getting ready to give the uh, the lecture. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, oh, I think her name is Jane, is the one who actually does the weigh-in with me. And even on the weeks where I, like, go up a little bit, she's like, well, you know what, you'll, you'll burn that off quick because... New fat comes off a lot faster than old fat. Yeah. I'm like, all right. And it does. It's totally true. I like that we're learning their names now. This is like a, a doxing with a th by a thousand cuts. Just right? slowly yeah, over exactly. time. You go, <laughs> AJ, we'll get her last name, and then we'll find out what part of town she lives in. And, uh, <laughs> that guy. The director's <laughs> cut of TMS where you actually find out the, uh, sure. the story behind the story. There was a guy last night who won the editing uh, award. Yeah. During the Oscars, who got up and basically doxed his mom or somebody. Like he said where he grew up and where his, what his home street oh. was and what town he was in. I'm his like, dude. Name. He doxed his mom. That's funny. You may as well not, you know, yeah. go that much into detail there, buddy. You're a lot of I don't think it's not like Bradley Cooper out there doing it. I mean, you know, one's going to say, oh, I've been waiting to find out the new, like the details about that film editor guy. I've yeah. been tracing his career for years and finally I have the dirt. So did you, so, okay, the, the movie you thought would win did. 
Right. Uh, Green Book. Yeah, Green Book. Yeah, Green Book. I expected to win the the Oscar, but I also expected Glenn Close. I mean, I had, I had a bunch of uh, uh, mistakes on my on my um, my pick list. I thought uh, Detainment of the short films, the live action shorts. Yeah. I thought Skin was good. The one that did win. They were all heavy duty, and I mentioned that on um, on Film Sack, but. Mm. I'll mention it here. For ten bucks on iTunes, you can see all the live action shorts and three of the five animated ones. And come on, let's face it, we all saw Bow when we saw Incredibles too, so we don't need to see that one again. Mm-hmm. Nice to see Spider Verse get the uh, get the nod it deserved this yeah, year. Yeah, did uh, I was waiting uh, at least with Spider Verse when they were running down the list of all the people to thank, and they were talking about the cast and the crew. I think the last guy got cut off, and I think he was about to say, and, and we need to give a big thank you to Stan Lee, because I did not hear Oh, any Stan, Stan Lee references. Lee, a Stan Lee thank you. And I, I totally could be wrong. I may have missed it. But well, you got the Carrie Fisher shout-out at the very end. That was somebody doing a nerd shout-out. That was cool. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, cool. the, during the Green Book thing, right at the end. Oh, Something yes, about, right. this is dedicated to our friend Carrie Fisher, and then, they were, then the music started. Which I thought was a little odd, yeah. but it's fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mm-hmm. Carrie Fisher's great, so talk about her anytime you want. But it just felt like a What's year too late. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. the connection is. It was very strange, but mm-hmm. um, I was happy to see, see Spider Verse win. Uh, I think it deserved to win in a very thick year of really awesome animated features. I I am personally mm-hmm. very torn because I loved Incredibles two and I loved um, Isle of Dogs. I, I love Dogs. I love mm-hmm. Dogs is one of my favorite things I've ever seen. Like it is such a cool mm-hmm. thing, but. Mm-hmm. But Spider Verse deserved it, and I'm glad that it, it got really it. did. It um, was such a technological achievement. Yeah. Um, Olivia Coleman, I thought, had the uh, the absolute best speech of the night. Uh, basically, she sounded like like I would have sounded going up there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was a hoot. I liked her a lot. Yeah. She was, yeah. But for people who don't know who that is, um, she's for me anyway, famously in that uh, Hot Fuzz movie. She's the uh, the mm-hmm. one female cop that's kind of goofy and turns out not to be crazy like the rest of the town. Right. But she's the one that kept saying, I'd like to report a murder. Her. <laughs> she's great. She's, she's absolutely great. And then uh, uh, call me a big sappy sap, but uh, I loved the the Gaga, Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper uh, shallow um, performance. I thought oh, that was right. really, really good. I was sad he didn't do it as Rocket Raccoon. That would have been cooler. <laughs> you know, just toting Tell a big Tell me gun. something, girl. <laughs> Aren't we all grouped in this crazy world? Get some kind of automatic rifle on his shoulder and bring me that guy's arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll keep all of the other guardians from harm. I always feel bad though. Last year, same thing happened to Del Toro when he got Best Picture for uh, for Lady Does It with a Fish Man, and um, <laughs> he he had just broken up with his longtime wife like that, like two days before. And in Gaga's case, she just broke up with her fiance or whoever that was like two days yeah. before. Like, man, a little turmoil at home. Nothing goes, nothing, nothing works quite like that. Right. Uh, and who, uh, you and I both saw that uh, Gaga documentary, though, one, the five foot. I still haven't it watched it. Five foot six. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I meant it's to. really, really good. And yeah. it's, she ties a lot of her big moments to the breakups that occurred right before them or right around the time of them. Yeah. So, like, you know, her her breakthrough artist award or whatever she got and and a five foot two thank you jack lope ashley um it's it's uh we don't want to misrepresent her height which is what i think that <laughs> no that's the name of the documentary yeah but isn't that referencing her height it is referencing her height yeah, yes yeah. we don't want to get that number wrong <laughs> short lady gaga <laughs> <laughs> diminutive lady gaga yeah She's not quite Vern Troyer, but uh, she'll she'll do in a pinch. <laughs> right, exactly. uh, yeah, that was uh, was good. Also, Bradley yeah. Cooper. I don't know who Bradley Cooper's wife is, but hubba hubba, she's a what a beautiful lady that is. Oh, she is, yeah. Yeah, I don't know her yeah. name even, but I was like, oh, I was smitten with her. Anyway, uh, it yeah. was great. My favorite moment was when uh, uh, Captain America helped that lady up the steps because she got all tangled up in her <laughs> dress, and he was just being all sweet like Captain America would be. Steve Rogers totally. just jump into the yeah, was, thing. It was great. That was great. Yeah. yeah. That was probably my favorite moment. The rest of it kind of is just a lot of self-flagellating, uh, mm. congratulatory insider stuff that's, um, you know, it solves. I was talking to somebody on Twitter about this. Somebody says, I don't understand why the Oscars even exist. And I said, well, actually, it's as someone who doesn't really enjoy them very much, it's mm-hmm. still obvious to me they exist mm-hmm. because, A, humans like good competition, and mm-hmm. so we're drawn to it for that reason. And B, 
uh, the the industry likes to, you know, show its stuff and do its thing. Right. right. Like Acknowledge it, the the performances that uh... they like to do their thing. So why yeah. is this so hard to understand? I get why there's award shows. You may hate them. I don't like them that much either. But I actually mm-hmm. kind of like the no host idea. I think the show uh, probably is a little more boring as a result. But I also yeah. kind of like that there's not a bunch of wacky shit between everything. Like just get right to it, go to the next thing. Like I something about in me appreciated that last night, and mm-hmm. I can't quite articulate it because on the other hand, I also kind of thought it was a little boring. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I don't think you. Yeah, need well, a host. It, and it feels like I mean they still had a lot of the stuff that a host would have brought, like the uh, the Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, Maya Rudolph thing. They came out and did their jokes at the very beginning and made the joke that they weren't making jokes like they would if they were a host, mm-hmm. yet it still was that thing that a host would do at the beginning of the show. They didn't go, welcome to the Oscars. Our first category is blah, blah, blah. I mean, they still have to they still have to uh, grease the wheels before they uh, send the truck down the road. They basically the just, made, they just <laughs> made it so everything had a host. Everything had a mini host right. is what they did. Right. And yeah, that's but fine. they didn't have all that little fluff stuff in the middle with the... I, I agree. Um, I think Mike Myers and Dana Carvey could have calmed down a little bit. Just calm down, guys. <laughs> like, I get that you're, you know, it's great, and you're you're, yeah. you're Wayne and Garth, and it's great, but just tone it down. Situation. And also, oh my gosh, could there be more commercials that are using Queen music during this thing? Like, <laughs> I, all I, every time they'd show the old who's left of the Queen band sitting out in the audience, yeah. I'm thinking yeah. to myself... Is money just pouring into your pockets there as you get all these in- things that are happening around you? All of this licensed music, all this stuff happening at once. Is mu- Can you feel your pockets getting heavier as you sit there? Like- well, keep in mind, John Deacon is still alive. He just doesn't want to be involved with Queen anymore. Oh, yeah. He just doesn't want to be. So it's really just Freddie is, is uh, the only person who's not around anymore. Um I was getting a little tired of that same instrumental piece from Bohemian Rhapsody, the song that would play any time Bohemian Rhapsody won and they had to wait for people to go up to the stage. Yeah. It's that same. And it would be like, it would be like the crescendo when it was supposed to start and then it would not. And then, and then did, it would like connect back into itself. Yeah. Like, okay, come on. And it had two Queen. awards in a row and they had to play the thing twice for the <laughs> same amount of time because for some reason, all of those people are parked way up in the nosebleeds. Right. So they right. got to walk all the way down there. That was weird. That's and the producers weird. have no idea about any other Queen songs besides that one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, hey, you know what? Killer Queen had a great little guitar lick as well. <laughs> i will say it made me i still haven't seen the queen thing the movie uh oh really bohemian rhapsody yeah so i think i'm probably gonna turn around and see it but i did notice commercials for a for a dilton john deal that's coming yeah yeah the one that's got uh, the kid from the kingsman in it Um, that's who that is playing playing dilton john i couldn't figure i knew that face was familiar but i could not clamp down on who it was but I'll bet you there's a bunch of these coming because now it's all in vogue again, you know. I'm waiting for the Rick Astley biopic. I think that's going to be fantastic. If it's not just him dancing, I'm never going <laughs> to give you Just in a up. sailor's outfit? Yeah, the whole We're time. The is too low. Doing that thing he does? Yeah. If he doesn't do that the entire two hours, we've made a horrible mistake. And we should <laughs> rethink our priorities. All right. Uh, uh, Dunaway time, perhaps. Yes. Mm. Let's bring it. Mm, I'm curious if he ever watches this stuff. It seems like he would not be the type. I wouldn't expect him to. I think he's a recap guy. Yeah. Oh, hi. I feel like it's a recap Oh, you'll you see Green Book now. Oh, yeah. hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. The one, the only, Brian Dunaway. Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Oh, hello. Oh, How hi. are you, sir? How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Oh, I'm that's great. fantastic. Do you watch I mean, the Oscars? Not, a, not enough not enough space between when I saw you last, but you know. What's well, that's true. We had somebody in the <laughs> chat room before the show started tonight going, how come Brian Bunaway wasn't here? Did he get kicked off the show? Why wasn't he here on Thursday? I'm like Or Wednesday. I'm like, dude, he missed one episode last week, yeah. and, and and Randy stood in for him. It wasn't. People are weird. Wait, wait. Yeah. I didn't know this part. Randy stood in for me. Yeah. yeah. Unacceptable. Yeah. You're not. <laughs> you didn't approve that, did you? You didn't approve it. I he even did it with the flu, Brian Dunaway. Like he, he was on the verge of death. 
I don't think he had the flu yet. I think he was still getting the flu. I think he was. He sounded oh, yeah. great last Wednesday. He was. He was. He did. But Wednesday night, he was like a mess during raid because uh, because of the flu. So yeah. like it hit him that day. I think he went home and he licked a hobo's uh, uh, crotch. <laughs> That'll do it every time. They had a, a doorknob licking contest at uh, Blizzard, and unfortunately, he lost. Yeah, he lost that bet. Uh, or did he win? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe uh, well, it depends on who used the doorknob before him. What? Anyway. Ooh. Hey, Dunaway, hey. welcome to the, the Stump Dunaway. Or no, it's not that anymore. <laughs> what was it called? Babel Royale. <laughs> Jesus, Where, it's only uh, been Babel Royale for two <laughs> that's years. That's all it's I ever mean. been. I know. What I'm could not, it be? I'm not thinking. Uh, where people call in to 801-471-0462 and they participate in the goofiness that uh, comes after. It's a little bit of a contest. And the lines are open. If you want to be today's first contestant, you'll be calling me and you'll be doing it now. Like this person. Hi, you're on the air. Hey. Hi, who's this? This is uh, Matt from Nebraska. Well, hello, Matt from Nebraska. How's Nebraska these days? What's going on in the great state of Nebraska? Uh, We are covered in snow. Wonderful. How are you? Yeah, it's probably the stuff that uh, we had over the weekend or or, uh, last week. We sent it all your way. What part of Nebraska are you from, Matt? Uh, I'm in Lincoln. Oh, Lincoln. Very nice. That's a main, uh, that's the capital, no? Is Is that right? Yeah. It is. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, so Ibit, Ibit, are you up on weather patterns and you know where the weather goes, or are you just being very centric? Like, what, <laughs> no, what happens I, here? <laughs> I'm aware of when it comes from Utah and then hits us, and where it goes from there. Yeah, <laughs> which is Nebraska. He gets our well, Brian gets our sloppy seconds. They get his right. sloppy thirds or whatever. That's right. That's a gross reference, isn't it? I shouldn't use it. I've used it. I say it a lot, pretty loosely. It's not like yeah. someone will say, "Oh, yeah. don't give me that bread. That's your sloppy seconds." But I'm. I'm meaning it in this much more sort of Gross. colloquial, innocent, innocent what way. Kind of, and what I kind think, of communal? What kind of communal bread are you passing around? Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> we call it the old sloppy s. Hey, I uh, should put a toothpick behind my ear. Go ahead. <laughs> I wondered what you I thought listen. about that. I know you do. You're listen. I, there's nothing I say here that I don't think you're going to hear. So let mm. me get this out out now. Brian Dunaway likes um, to sloppy listen. first. Sloppy first. There you go. Hey, Poppy first. Uh, let's yeah. get into Poppy it. First. Let's play this game. Brian Ibbett will explain to Matt and us what our topic is, how the game uh, game works, and what Matt could win. That's right, Scott. I'm going to be giving Scott and Brian Dunaway a topic, and they're going to go back and forth with answers for that topic. If one of them gives a wrong answer, a repeated answer, or they take too long to come up with an answer, the win will go to the other player. Matt, from Nebraska, your job is to predict who is going to come out on top based on the topic today you are playing for a copy of seven days to die on steam as well as a copy of cities skylines plus the after dark dlc and world of goo all three on steam all three courtesy of uh, various listeners and uh, supporters of the show uh lois haley and matthew bach support uh supporting that, us that, today that's that's actually me. oh are you math Luke? this is say, matthew bach oh, you're <laughs> Ma- Matthew Bach from Nebraska. <laughs> That's well, too good. Would, Here would comes you like a game. copy of? Would you like a copy of? You know what? In in place, I will send you something cool from the uh, the 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 prize vault here. Right, I've got what, posters what got? and I got a couple cool things to send. So, right. how much for the cat? <laughs> you can't have her. Well, you can have the cat. I mean, that sounds we cool. Can have Scott's, we can have Scott's cat. Yeah, you can have my cat. cat. My cat had diarrhea wish, the other day. I wish was this was nightmare. more like uh, like the old Wheel of Fortune where you would have the have the uh, spinning the around. The porcelain. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, uh, oh, I'll take the uh, right. I'll, I'll take, take, I'll take uh, your porg. Mm. I'll yeah. take your porg uh, for 200 <laughs> yeah, but... just Captain like, America. Well, you, the porcelain Dalmatian somewhere down there <laughs> on the floor behind me is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, right. we play music like this. <laughs> Hill, yeah. The new recliner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what's our uh, what's our topic? Topic then? today. Uh, this is one that uh, I came up with, inspired by a question that we had at the Geek Suit Drink trivia thing a couple weeks ago, and decided this would be a great one. So, since oh, I don't know, we'll just say ever 1977. It's a long time ago. There have been 18 movies that Box Office Mojo describes as a body switch comedy film so a body oh. switch now don't don't restrict that topic to just think of two people switching their bodies think of it also like it could be one character who wakes up in a body that's not their own okay. all right okay uh 18 of these films and i want to see how many you can name 
Uh, Matt from Nebraska, who do you think is going to win this, and who would you like to go first? Uh, I'm going to pick Scott to win and Brian to go first. All right. Okay. It's on you, Brian Dunaway. You begin. Well, I don't think you can have a body switch movie and not think about Freaky Friday. Oh, now, you... which one is the question? Because she said since when? 77. Since 1977. I'm going to go with the more recent one. <laughs> go with the more recent one. That is the one that made the most money, as a matter of fact, uh, between the two. $110 million at the box office. The one from 1977, $25 million at the box office. Both of them included in the list. Both of them currently getting crossed off. So with one with one stone, you just killed Take two that, birds. Skit. Um, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to say big. Big. That's a good one. That's a good one. Number one on the list. Yeah, oh, wow. $115 million lifetime gross in theaters. Uh, 1988, Tom Hanks uh, dancing on a little keyboard at FAO Schwartz. Yeah, right in yeah. front of... On a uh, big keyboard, really. It was a big keyboard, and it was right in front of um, Robert Loggia had to watch him That's do right. it. That's right. Yeah. Well, and danced with him, too. Danced with him. Mm-hmm. I love that movie. The Loge. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's say you... I- I'm going to go with uh, one of the ones we watched on Film Sec, and one of my favorite switchy body films, Dream a Little Dream, oh, with the two Dream Corys. a Little Dream. Forgot 15th on the list, $5 million at the box office. Wow. Well, that probably wasn't bad for the time, for 89. No. It's probably all right. No, not bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dream a Little Dream, number 15 out of 18 on the uh, list. Ooh, uh, all right. Ooh, that was a little, uh, let's that go, was a little lower than I thought it'd be. Ooh, let's, ooh. let's go with my mom, or my mom, my wife's favorite, uh, one of her favorite rom-coms, she loves 13 going on 30. Oh, oh that was going to be my next one. one. Yeah. 2004. Uh, it's got the Hulk uh, in it. It does have the Hulk. Well, what the not Hulks? as the Hulk. It's got the, yeah. Well, right. the current Hulk in it. And it and it has, uh, 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 what's her name? Uh, Electra. Yeah. Electra and Electra. the Hulk. It's got it Electra and yeah. the Hulk in it. Everybody yeah. knows this. That's right. Sure. <laughs> what a crappy Electra, movie. Electra on. nachos. Electra's so bad. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> All, All right. right. All right. So body switch movies. I'm going to stay within the uh, a little bit worried about this one, but I kind of should I go with the safe one. No, I'm going to go with this one. OK. Uh, body switch movie film stack. Uh, we watched face off. Oh, oh. oh I didn't even think I of was face really off. hoping you wouldn't include that one because no. they don't consider it a body switch movie. Come on. <laughs> they that. No, they don't. It's uh, you just it's switch faces. A- that's it. It's not a supernatural twist that that you know puts two people into opposite bodies. So oh, face yeah! off or not? Are you, are you telling me? Are you telling me that putting someone else's face on your face and yeah. still being alive is not supernatural? I disagree. I'm gonna, I'm at, well, I'm going to tell you it's not a body switch because all they uh, did was face switch. You're right. Surgically switch faces. But, but Nicholas really, Cage was still Nicholas Cage inside. Yeah. And but the rest of it. Face. All right, fine. Yeah. Can no. I go with like father, like son? No, you, you can't. Too late. Down with that one. That really? A good one to go with. I'm yeah. going to name a couple. Can I name a couple and see if I remember Absolutely. them right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, 18 again with uh, uh, old man. Uh, I forgot the kid, but uh, George, George Burns. George Burns. Yes. And Schlatter. Uh, Tom Schlatter? Jonathan Schlatter? Yeah. That was the guy. Oh, yeah. J- I thought you were talking about Jonathan. Oh, you're talking about. 18 about again chick? was. How about the hot chick? The hot chick is in here, too. Yeah. Dang it. How, how, if he'd have gotten it wrong on. Um, uh, Freaky Friday for the original. How old is that mm-hmm. movie? Because I would have said the old one. Oh, the old one is 77. The new one is 03. They were both on the list. So I we would have gotten it. Okay. All right. Yeah, you would have gotten it. All right. Yep. Um, um, let me think if there's anything else I can think of. Those are the big ones. That was a good trivia question. I, I like can't, that I can't. You yeah. know what? I was, it's funny that you screwed up already because I think I might be out. <laughs> I, I can't think I mean, of any more. Right. You well, at least you would have had a couple. Um a couple you didn't mention. Zach Efron had his own, which was 17 again, not to be confused oh, with 18 again. Right. 17 again back in 2009. The Change Up in 2011. All of Me, uh, Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin, if I remember correctly, in 84. Oh, right. What, yep. I remember that. You mentioned Like Father, Like Son. That was what Judge Reinhold and uh, uh, Fred Savage. No, that's. Um, no, Dudley Moore. Dudley Moore and, and uh, the, the Christian freak out now what's his name oh right 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 Cam- yes cameron C- C- uh, C- kirk cameron. cameron yeah uh being john malkovich oh, <laughs> oh really? I, really that's it yes yep yeah. prelude to a kiss with alec baldwin uh, it's meg ryan switches places with an old man <laughs> and kisses alec baldwin really yep awesome uh nine lives from 2016 the movie switch which will that would have been a good one 
What's yeah, the, what's the what's the one where uh, Adam or um at uh um Fred Savage? No, Adam uh <laughs> freaking I can't think of his name. Dead dad. Uh, SNL guy, uh, lunch lady, the maybe. Oh, and Andy Sandler or Adam Sandler? Adam Sandler, it, him and his sister. Mm. That, that one doesn't yeah, count, yeah, does that it? That wasn't a switch. That yeah, was just that's weird. That's not a switch. That's just weird. That was weird. <laughs> that's just right. yeah, exactly. Uh, vice versa. That must be the one with um, Judge Reinhold and uh, Fred Savage. Uh, something special and it's a boy girl thing both of those not even grossing five hundred thousand dollars in the box office so no wonder neither of us have heard of those or none of us yeah. have heard of those. so here's the so okay is, is there any chance there's like 20 movies on that hallmark channel yeah that do christmas movies where it's all swapperinos yeah. would any yeah. of those been on the list probably not no TV. It's probably not unless unless they had a theatrical release because i do think that's what box office mojo restricts it to mm -hmm. um but who knows? Uh, it's a boy-girl thing, maybe? Something special? Yeah. I don't Something's know. in the back of my head that I've missed here, and I cannot bring it out. There's some movie that the whole premise is literally just a body swap, and I can't think what it is. Body swap. Mm. I mean, I guess you know what I could do with... Uh... No, that doesn't work. Was Indiana Jones possessed by somebody in the, the t Temple of Doom, or was that just him getting drugged? It was... I mean, it was... Uh getting drugged the whole kalima thing yeah. in uh, temple of doom yeah, yeah that was so it wasn't some spirit taking him over because no, that could no because that could be body swappy right it could be i also i also don't think you include movies where that like that isn't the main premise of the film like uh, you could have said scooby and shaggy and velma when they all swapped bodies around that uh that cauldron Right. Remember right. when the little oh, green, yeah, yeah, not the about green that. smoky heads yeah. popping into another one mm. so i don't think that one uh because that's just uh, that a bit. Was, yeah, that's just a thing. It was just a bit. All right. Uh, Anna Krakatow says, did Jimmy Smith's Becoming a Woman get mentioned? That must have been Switch. That was uh, Jimmy Smith and Ellen Barkin. Really? Is that right? Yeah. Sure. I don't know. I didn't even heard of that. Dubious Rascal says, your name? What? I don't get it. I don't know what he means by that. Thanks. All I know oh. is Matthew Bach, the great, uh, the great uh, uh, bele ma uh, malevolent, no, benevolent uh, contributor to the show with all his rad prizes. <laughs> He has won today, and he gets a physical yes. grab bag from uh, Brian Ibbett. So here's all you got to do. He gets a physical yeah. grab. Yeah, he gets a physical, physical grab at my bag. Yep, grabbing your bag. Uh, all you got to do for that great <laughs> opportunity is send him an email, <laughs> coverville at gmail.com, and it will be yours. Matt, it's great to talk to you, and I hope that the snow remains not horrible for you. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. He's such a quiet-natured little feller. Yeah, you know, just kind of hey. a great supporter of the show, and those prizes will come back again on Wednesday. So mm -hmm. uh, be here Wednesday and and win them then. Got some information about those toilets, just real quick here. Um, uh, here it is about those toilets. Yeah, that's what we talked earlier about flushing power in the U.S. versus Canada. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. When low flow toilets were mandated in the U.S., many manufacturers deployed quick and dirty fixes. My house, built in the '90s, had toilets Ew. that were basically old style toilets, which uh, a what? Which a baffle had been added to the tank to reduce the amount of water per flush, and it got clogged frequently. But basically, there was a mandate at one point where they were like, "We're conserving yeah. water in this country. These toilets are going to be low flow. That's what everybody and, needs to be making." And that, and that gummit if Hank Hill didn't have a whole episode about it, that it was, was fantastic. a great episode of King of the Hill. Yeah. You're right. I was just watching that like three days ago. What's up with that? What's going on with that? What's up with that? I don't know, Keenan. <laughs> Uh, well, all right there, Brian Dunaway, all the way in South Carolina. Uh, don't forget, Brian and I have a show to do, and that will be today, the Boop Show. We're going to talk about a bunch but of But cool what will it be about? Indie games, small games, you know, stuff we find and play, video games. It's going to be very exciting. So check that out today at 5.30 Eastern Time. That's 3.30 Mountain at frogpants.tv if you want to watch it live or go to frogpants.com and find uh, the podcast, and uh, you can get it that way. Brian, have a fantastic day. Face. Off. See Brian. Face off. <laughs> I could eat a peach for hours. Right. I was really hoping no one, neither of you were going to say face off because I didn't want to go into that like, oh, well, technically not a body swap. Mm. I almost, I well, I. Very literally uh, a face swap. <laughs> when, when he said it, I got all excited thinking, oh, that's a great one. Why didn't I think of that? And then you clarified yeah. and I went, oh, I'm so glad I didn't think of that. Yeah. Because <laughs> that could have been yep. rough for me. All right. Let's do a little bit of this. This is your radio newscaster with another exclusive sensational summary of world and local events. Time for the news brought to you by. 
Brought to you by America's Next Top Podcaster. Hey, I put up a brand new episode at the end of last week featuring special guest star Rob Sesternino from Survivor. And Rob has a podcast. This guy uh, has spent almost as much time on the podcast award stages as I have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we had uh, each of the teams interview him, and they came up with three very different interviews. How did they do? Listen to the interviews and then listen to the judging and, and make your own votes. That is... America's Next Top Podcaster. Find it at America's Next Top Podcaster.com or go to iTunes or Google Play and search for America's Next Top Podcaster. I greatly enjoyed hanging out with him on that episode. Yeah. It was a really fun. Really nice guy. Yep. Like a really genuine, mm-hmm. very cool, nice Not guy. Not some a hole ex TV guy. Not at all. Right. Totally right. different dude. He's he's great. Yes. Uh, all right. Let's he's get no to it. He's no Richard Hatch. No. Who is, though? <laughs> <laughs> Richard Hatch was the first one of Survivor, not to be confused with uh, the guy from Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, different Richard Hatch. Now, that different Richard Hatch, by all accounts, was also very nice, the Battlestar guy. Yes. yes. But the uh, Richard Hatch from Survivor is a notorious dick. Mm-hmm. Hey! The, the tax dodging uh, dude. Yes. Yeah, he's yes. A, he's Let's a, talk about the news. He's a wiener. Hey, check this out. Uh, this is not, I didn't intend this to roll in so easily. <laughs> roll. I use the term roll <laughs> as well. Uh, but also, we were talking about low flush toilets. Uh, Americans, in their use of toilet paper, is wiping out Canadian forests, according to environmental wiping groups. Out. Yeah, oh, wiping out. I didn't even notice there's another one in there. <laughs> That's really good. Americans' desire for soft toilet paper and lots of it is destroying ancient Canadian forests, according mm-hmm. to two prominent environmental groups. This week, ancient Canadian forests, huh? Uh, don't touch his funny bone. I was mix those two up. <laughs> ancient Chinese secret and operation. Yeah, and operation. Yes. Is that weird? They all they're that from is, the same era. Really so weird. I don't yeah. know why, but and whenever you say that, I hear the other thing. Anyway. Ancient Chinese medicine, huh? <laughs> don't touch his funny bone. <laughs> <laughs> what a stupid game! I hate that game. <laughs> anyway, in the report filed in the uh, called the issue with tissue. Huh. Getting a little cheeky there. Oh, cheeky. Yeah. I did it again. Che- cheeky. It is. It's hard not to, uh, for us not to do that. It's not bad. The Natural Resource Defense Council and Stand.Earth say the average American uses three rolls of toilet paper per week. Who's doing what? that? Yeah. I, <laughs> what? I certainly don't. I don't either. Do they mean households? I, see, I could see that. Like straight up in my house, I'll bet we go through three. I'll bet we do two rolls if we're lucky a week. With four of us. Wow. One, yeah, two, with the three. two of us, uh, one roll maybe every two weeks. Yeah, that seems wrong. That's I mean, insane. I don't know what... Uh, their numbers boy, some don't People hold really got to, I don't know, eat more roughage. The bidet, the bidet is the way to go. Yeah, no, I agree. I love a good bidet. Mm-hmm. And ours has a seat warmer, which is also nice. Oh, yeah. Anyway, most Americans probably do not know that the toilet paper they flush away comes from ancient forests, but clear-cutting... Those forests is costing the planet a great deal. Maintaining the Canadian boreal forest is vital to avoiding the worst impacts of climate change, says Anthony Swift, director of NRDC's Canada Pro- or Canada Project. Uh, they said this in a news release. Uh, the report says Procter and Gamble is particularly the worst U.S. paper company at using sustainable components. Um, let's see. They say that Procter and Gamble did not respond to requests for comment. The Reuters news service said it also asked the company to comment with no response. But apparently, they make a lot of toilet paper, and Americans are just using it, man. Just yeah. give me more toilet paper. That's what I do when I use money. I just go on the thing, and I pull out a huge pile. That's what the cat does too. Yeah, we had to get a uh, we had to get a metal shield. Mm-hmm. that comes down over the roll because she will sit there and like rip it up with her claws and chew on it with her teeth and we mm-hmm. come into the bathroom prior to getting this little metal shield and it would be like paper scraps all over the floor and it's a yeah. monster that's what a cat will do yeah. uh tarpiculus in the chat room says severe ibs checking in those are rookie numbers you got to get those up all right so maybe they, <laughs> maybe the averages go up if you count everybody with a need for more I sometimes will use, I have a roll of toilet paper over by my gaming rig over here that's just for me blowing my nose. Uh-huh. So maybe, you know, maybe there's like a whatever. But we also buy the, the recycled uh, cheapy stuff to try to be a more yeah. uh, whatever, uh, what's the word? More in, uh, an environment, less of a carbon footprint, mm-hmm. as the uh, kids say in 2019. Make less of an earthly impact. Yeah. yeah. Impact on the earth. Uh, let's do one more story. Let's see which one of these do I want to do. Oh, we have a we have a follow up. Let's do this one. 
Oh, good. Okay. Eating zombie deer meat is safe after all. So you don't have to stress about it. Thank goodness. We had that talk. Zombie. Yeah, we were talking about the zombie deer meat. Mm-hmm. And we were saying so don't eat it. So they tested the zombie deer meat. They did. <laughs> and they said eating it does not uh, Peter be a problem. If you cook it right, it's perfectly safe. For now, anyway. Researchers examined about 80 people who feasted on the meat of deer and tested positive for chronic wasting disease. The meat, not the people. Uh, this is a fatal illness for the deer that causes zombie-like behavior in the animals, could spread to humans, and found over the course of a 60-year study. No significant, significant changes in health conditions, they say. Uh, that's according to USA Today. They reported that on Thursday. Uh, the tainted deer meat was unwittingly served to 200 to 250 people at a fire company in Oneida County, New York, on March 13th, 2005. 20 you know, that was the year of serenity. Batman Begins, and the third Star Wars prequel. I I I wish I could do that. I wish I did a better job of connecting years with movies because uh, we'll be doing this during film sack and we'll mm -hmm. say, well, didn't that movie come out in like 2003? And I'm like, no, wasn't it like four years ago? Yeah, no, Brian, I don't know why I do that. I strongly relate you're movies really to the year good. they released in, and I don't yeah, know why. Really, really good yeah, that. it feels like there's something wrong with me. Maybe, maybe it's a problem. I don't know. Captain Kipper just posted a little video of zombie deer. Is this it, is, uh, is it horrifying? one of the most gruesome things I've ever seen. Is I do it, not like it. Is it a living deer? Like a moving, yes. walking? Yes. Yes. Oh. No, I don't like this at all. No, I don't like that either. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> that is a very disturbing, disturbing video. Oh, you get a glowy eye, too. Yeah, well, yeah. And look how miserable he must be. Yeah. That's horrible. That's really Oof. awful. I'm not eating that meat. Are you kidding? No. Who exactly. wants a, who Don't wants tell me a that's thick, safe. Who wants a thick slice of the face? <laughs> oh. there's, there's a lot of extra meat here. I don't know why, but have some. Mm -mm. Look at that. It sizzles even before you cut it. <laughs> oh, I feel bad Oof. for that thing. Poor thing. Ooh. Plus, all animals remind me of Rainer. Everything looks like Rainer oh, to me. Yeah. She kind of looks like a deer. Anyway, don't, uh, bottom line is, uh, you can, but I would say don't. I'd say don't. I'd say stay away from it if you can. Have the pudding, don't eat the meat. Yeah. How can you have your pudding if you don't eat your meat? Exactly. All right. Let's take a break. When we come back, major spoilers, Trek nerd, all that business. Later in the show, we've got uh, a reminder about Vegas, a cool email, and a mashup mm. even. Plenty of content coming up. Before all that, though, a quick break with some music from Brian. Yes, uh, we're going to uh, the Gold Coast of Australia to a singer named Venice, V-A-N-E-E-S-E. -E -E. She's actually a British singer-songwriter, but she's she's been living in uh, the Gold Coast of Australia for now at, uh, over a decade. Um, she grew up in a household that, uh, you know, parents loved both hip-hop and show tunes, and her her pop music kind of melds all those into into one she reminds me a little bit of lana del rey or lord very mm. much like those uh, artists in her singing style which i really really like sure. um her album goddess or her single goddess came out at the end of last week check it out here is venice all right we'll be right back stay tuned in your enthusiasm to show mary a good evening out on your wedding anniversary last night you had a whole lobster and quite a large one i might add and numerous olives Served in thin shell glasses and surrounded by amber fluid. You don't mean me, do you? Hey, what? Huh? This is the morning stream. It puts the lotion in the basket. And we're back, everyone. Back mm -hmm. and ready to call Steven Schleicher. That's right. It's Monday. It's always a good Monday when we got Steven on deck. Yeah. It's his day. Except, oh, there he is. All right. We're calling him. Get a little Skype music. He's so fast, we barely have to hear it. And that's yes. real great. Now we got to play his theme. Steve. It's Stephen Schleicher, everybody, all the way from Hayes, Kansas. Stephen, what's up? Hey, not a whole lot. Nice to have you here. 
Yeah, good morning, Scott. Good morning, Brian. How's your good uh, morning? How's your life of major spoilery uh, things happening for you? Uh, shoveling okay? snow. Oh, see, Brian, more leftovers. We got from you yeah, we got seven time. inches of snow in oh, one day. That's, that's is there that a lot for you guys? Is that yeah, uh, well. yeah. Typically, Western Kansas, the most we normally get is like three inches, maybe. Yeah, most of it's a lot less, but every other year we'll get like a big old major dump. When you're since you're in Kansas and when the storm is happening, do you hear? <laughs> no, you don't hear that outside. Okay, no. All right, the neighbor lady's not on a. a I'll get you, my pretty. She's not uh, our our neighbor lady, maybe. <laughs> she got a do- <laughs> a dog in a basket and a crappy old bike, and she's yelping at you. That's great. Hey, Stephen, welcome back to the show. It's uh, always a pleasure to have Stephen here. He's a maven of pop culture and uh, comics and movies and TV and all that fun stuff. If you go to majorspoilers.com, it's all the proof you need. But we add additional proof each week when he comes on on Monday and talks about the happenings and goings on in that world. For example, let's talk about G.I. Joe A6. Now, is that a shoe? It's a shoe. No, this was just announced. It's available now Mm -hmm. at the Foot Locker stores. But, uh, you know, the uh, the old Storm Shadow and the Snake Eyes have been rivals for years. And now Hasbro has teamed up with A6 to create two shoes, one that's a Storm Shadow shoe and one that's a Snake Eyes shoe. And they're actually kind of cool mm. if you look at the pictures for them. I mean, they look like white Asics. Uh, the, uh, I forget which one. The Snake Eyes is, is uh, white and Storm Shadow is black, I believe, right? I forget which one of them is which. One of them can't talk. Mm. Um, <laughs> Does one of them make noise and the other shoe doesn't? <laughs> that I the... don't remember. Okay. <laughs> But, I mean, they do look pretty cool with the little uh, Cobra logo on the back and uh, G.I. Joe logos and there's hats and everything that's going on on this. I think this is going to be a limited time thing. But if you're someone who likes to collect shoes, and I don't know if there's anybody in the in the listening audience that likes to collect shoes, but these might be a pair to grab a hold of uh, and, and uh, have them stick around on your shelf for years. I know my son likes to get different kinds of shoes and display them in his bedroom but yeah i don't know how you're, i don't know how putting them on is half the battle yeah yeah <laughs> nice. that's right well done uh <laughs> well, now you've thrown me oh uh, uh, uh i don't know if he listens to the show much anymore but uh uh mark the terpster turpin is a huge uh shoe collector nut collects everything mm-hmm. especially like one time off like weird promotional really? shoe de- oh he's he's the amilda marcos of the frog pants network i'm like <laughs> Just, it's wow, crazy. Okay. I don't know how his wife doesn't just kick him out with all these shoes he buys, but uh, these look like something he'd get. So I'm yeah. going to copy this link and send it to him because it seems like a thing he would be all over. Uh, yeah. yeah. They're available now. That was the other thing is like the day that they made the announcement was the day that they were available. And I like it that companies are starting to do more of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw that with the Tetris 99. And of course, the Apex Legends was the same way where it's just like, hey, everybody, here's this new game. It's available now. Yeah. Hey, everybody, here's a new shoe. It's available now. I, I kind of like that, too. I like sudden release stuff. I'm, I'm tired of the whole like here. We told you about it six months ago and we're slowly getting there. Like I, I need I need more immediate satisfaction in my life. <laughs> and I think it kind of. I don't know what that does to the hype machine, but I think it kind of enhances it instead of going, oh, six months, then your your interest wanes on a product. But when it's like, hey, you these shoes are out today. Everyone's excited. You can go buy these right now at Foot Locker. Yeah. And then people are like, OK, where's my local Foot Locker? And then they go and get them, get yeah. them right then and there. And, and regardless of how people feel about Apple, they're good about this, too. Like they usually mm-hmm. up on stage. We got this hot new thing and it's out Friday or it's out today or whatever. And or you can order it today and it'll be here in six months. Yeah, sometimes that'll happen. But 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 I I always appreciated that and I appreciate that mm-hmm. about but like you said, Apex Legends was like one of those. Oh also you know what else is like that? Is that um Tetris ninety nine game for the Switch. Yep. yep. Just out of the blue. Shows up in that thing, there was no rumors about it, nothing. They talk about it and an hour later I'm playing it. Have you played it? You've played it. Oh yes. I love it. Brian's played it a bit too, I I believe. Right, Brian? A little bit, yep. Yeah. It's good. It's uh I've gotten as high as uh, 12, I think, is the best I can do. I have wow, to wrestle the get, switch from my boy a, first. Yeah. I had a uh, fifth place finish. See, I, I, I just have, I love Tetris, but I've never been good when things speed up. I, mm-hmm. I lose it, especially if the, if I'm stacked halfway high and the, and the, and the timer thing cranks in and it's going faster, I'm, yeah. s- I'm screwed. Just, yeah, it, there's a little bit of a, like a, a panic, like, ah, but my worst, the, the the best thing that I did was turn off the thing that if you push up on the arrow buttons, stuff drops immediately because I was accidentally going. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have to be careful, right? <laughs> you got to be really careful with that. So once I once I took that off, I was uh, I did a lot better. Yeah, I, I try to 
I try to go back and forth because the, the guys I see that are really playing hardcore, mm -hmm. they're using the drop but just really effectively, and I don't think I'm that good with it. Like yeah. it's just what do they call it? It's got a word. There's a term for that. Something. Yeah. Drop. Imme Immediate. Tetra Immediate and the Immediate Tetris pieces. Do you know the Tetra pieces are called Tetraminos? Tet Tetraminos. Tetraminos. Yeah. And each one has its own name. Yeah. Yeah. What's the big long one called? The thing I need all the time? Is that the one that doesn't come often enough? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the one I'm always storing just in case? Yeah, that's the one. All right. Well, anyway. Oh, I always forget that you can store them. I don't use that storm thing at all. Oh, you got to use the storm can. thing. I storm know, is I important. Know. Especially when you got some jiggity jaggy Z shaped one coming down. Yes, that doesn't have a, and you don't have a little nubbin to put it on. Yeah, you got to tuck it away until you got one. That's uh -huh. what you do. Uh -huh. Well, and you still got to fifth. That's impressive. I'm very impressed. Brian, Brian's playing it like my grandma, yet got fifth place. Hmm. I know. I need to. <laughs> how will how will I do if I use the store piece or the store? Uh, exactly, or whatever that's function. called. What is that called? Yeah, just, just store, store function. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk about Jim Henson's Storyteller. I used to love this. Would watch it with my daughter, and she was a, she adored it. Mm -hmm. um, as a guy, let's see, Jim. Or yeah, John it's Jim Hurt. Henson's yeah, uh, Storyteller. It came it, out in the eighties. Wasn't it John Hurt was the original host? Uh, uh, no, I believe it was a puppet that was the original host. Uh, or maybe it was a real guy with his dog that was a puppet. Yeah, I think the dog was a puppet. And it was a di and it was John Hurt, and later it was the guy who plays Dumbledore now. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, you're right. Gambone, uh, yeah. whatever his first name is. Um, yeah, but the dog was always a, a puppet, and he would always tell the story to the dog, and then they would mm -hmm. fade out into the actual recreation of whatever the story was. And it was always right. just like dark crystal weird, like cool stuff. Yeah, and the weird thing is, you know, that was originally in the 80s, and then it's kind of been on nonstop loop ever since. But now uh, they're going to be bringing it back with the Jim Henson Company, and they've got Neil Gaiman, uh, comic book writer, novel writer, has done a lot of stuff on the fantasy and um, uh, classic fairy tale uh, type stuff. Mm -hmm. He's going to be the executive producer on the series, and he's going to tell even more classic stories through that. So we're going to get an all new round of uh, Jim Henson storytellers uh, coming up soon. If you still like Jim Henson storytellers, there's boom studios actually has a comic book adaptation series mm. of a uh, storyteller that you can go check out. I'm reading this here. It says, um, John, okay, here it is. John hurt as the storyteller. Then Michael Gambone came in for the Greek myths. So that was like a separate spinoff uh, storyteller, Greek myths. And then you had Brian Henson and in all of that played the dog. Mm. So there's that. Uh, I'm very excited about this. This was produced in England. Are they doing it there again? It doesn't say. Uh, my guess is perhaps since that's where Neil Gaiman is, is headquartered, but um, it's stars. So they could be, uh, I think it's stars yeah. that's doing it. But, you know, it could end up um, being done here in America. Yeah. And they did a ton. The, the, the main crux of that thing was. Um, I think the reason they appealed to me so much is these none of these were stories I had heard of. They're very obscure, weird mm -hmm. folk tales that are European mostly. Like none of mm -hmm. this stuff is like based here. You don't get Bigfoot stories or anything dumb. And they were always so strange. And the puppets they would make were just elongated, freaky stuff, like weird effects. It's awesome. I didn't realize they were they were uh, adapting existing stories. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what Gaiman uh, selects. I don't know if any of you guys have read his Norse mythology book, where he's basically retelling the North folklore from what he remembers and kind of adding to it and building upon it. But it's really good. Yeah, I loved. I I did the audio book for that. It was mm -hmm. real, real good. Like fantastic stuff. Highly recommend that. In fact, you know what? Everybody, stop what you're doing and go get that book. It's great. If you like, if you like mythology, if you don't like mythology, you're not probably going to find much there to like. But Neil Gaiman, he's the, he's the I, man. I don't know. The stories about Loki in that book are pretty good. They're really good. It might be, and that's the other thing is he's. It's a much more uh, accurate take on the original myths. Mm -hmm. So Loki's very different. He's not the he's not the MCU Loki for sure. And he's, no, but there's a story of how Loki ended up fathering a or um, not fathering mothering a horse. That is pretty interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. Norse myth stuff, it's badass, man. Like, they need more of that in video games. I just would put that yeah. out as a separate request. Uh, there's not near enough of it. All right. Um, and that was what was great about that God of War game. It was all all digging deep into the Norse myth stuff, which is really cool. Uh, all right. And uh, what else? Oh, you also wanted to make sure people knew that there was a the best superhero movie of all time is dropping on Tuesday. Gosh, I wonder what That's that could right. be. That's right. 
Yeah. Man, it got like one Oscar Suicide nod last squad. night. Mm. But I mean, <laughs> if people are still haven't seen Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, it drops digitally tomorrow, yeah. the 26th, and people can go uh, pick that up then. Or uh, apparently it's still playing in theaters in some places. So if you can go see it in theaters, go see it in theaters. Uh, but just spread that Spider-Man love. Yeah, I want to say it's still in our local one down the street. Let me just check on that, actually, because I think it's still there. And I think it's still in the top top ranking box office stuff. Oh, maybe it fell out of the top 10. Yeah, it looks like a dick. Is it, yeah, it, it's now not at most of those theaters. Uh, yeah, do that. Watch that. Then go see the third uh, How to Train Your Dragon movie, because that's also supposed to be amazing, and I love that whole series. Uh, but but see Spider-Man first. That should be the rule. You can't watch any more animated features until you watch Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I, I agree. And, I, and I'm kind of upset. I mean, Brian, maybe you remember, hasn't, wasn't Beauty and the Beast the only animated movie to be nominated for Best Picture? For Best Picture, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's a shame that this one wasn't because Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse really elevates m- both animation and movie making to a whole other level. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's mm-hmm. truly film as art. And uh, I, I kind of wish it, it would have gotten a little bit more love. Yeah, you know what? Marvel just got there for, or Marvel, uh, uh, the true MCU just got their first Oscars last night. So let's give it some mm-hmm. time. You know, people. Yeah, are, yeah, yeah. But still, people start to appreciate on. it. And, and, you know, Black Panther getting a nomination is huge mm-hmm. in and of itself. So uh, mm-hmm. give it time. Yeah. There's always yeah. Into the Spider Verse 2. Hey, did you Coming know? Up, did you know that a, a 16 year old uh, kid with really long hair uh, composed all the music for Black Panther? I didn't. <laughs> right. That's the first thing we said. It's like, how old is this kid? And then he's talking about a decade ago when we were in college. Like, wow, okay, he does not look like he's in his 30s. Holy he, cow. Not at kid. all. He looks so young. But also, yeah. how awesome is that? That those, him yeah, and him and Coogler sure. are hanging out in film in school. Dorms. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. That made me, that wow. maybe made me the happiest of all night, of the whole night. That and that uh, supporting actress. Or no, not supporting. She won the main actress award, right? What's her name? Something Collins. What's her name? British lady. Um... Bucci oh Collins. yes, right. Uh, the one you liked the the speech from. What's her name? Oh, Olivia Coleman. Yeah, that one. It says besides she, her, I'm what I'm saying is besides her, that was my favorite moment in the entire thing. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I, I would think that you would appreciate the uh, the two that won for the animated short, getting up and saying, you know, geeky girls with your sketchbooks, afraid to tell your stories, mm-hmm. don't be. And yeah, I turned around and looked at Carter, and I smiled at her. Yep, that's and, <laughs> and she kicked me in the that's leg. All I could think about. Yeah, yeah, she kicked me right in the leg when I did that because she thinks I. <laughs> I keep making her see things that make her cry. She played a, a video game called Between Two Worlds, or no, Between Between Worlds, I think it is. Ah, I Between forgot. Between Two Ferns, the video game. No, it's like a, it's like this little indie game. It's a sweet little story and puzzle game, and it's super short. She beat it in like two hours, but I, I told her that it was going to be awesome, and she played it, and I didn't even know she was playing it, and she gets done with it. And she goes, oh, oh, and then spends the next ten minutes crying and hitting me in the arm for thinking it's cute Aww. that she's crying. She's such a. Uh, she needs out. to see the both of you need to see um, one small step, which was one of the animation, one of the uh, animated films that was nominated or the the shorts. Okay, uh, really good. It might be on that one. Might be on YouTube, but uh, take a look for it. It's uh, how come they don't have uh, all the animated step. shorts in that ten dollar deal? Do you think? Um, well, probably Disney's licensing rights. Licensing probably for for Bow is why that one's not included. The other one was um, Cartoon Saloon. Mm. Um, is the owner of it, and I don't know what their licensing rights are either. But mm. um, you know, you get a oh, it's an Irish animation film and television studio. Anyway, I mean, you get the rest of the stuff for ten bucks. Totally worth it. All right, well, we'll see it at some point. But yeah, we love that stuff. I, I don't Heavy. think either. Heavy stuff, but good. All right. I like heavy. We'll stick, stick with you. All right. Uh, well, Stephen, it's uh, been a pleasure as always. Anything on the site you want people to be keeping track of? I think people should go check out a series that pops up once a month, usually towards the end of the month, called Random Access Memory, where Rand Bolivia, Bolivia who is the um, one half of Ookla the Mock, the uh, geeky, nerdy uh, band, mm. uh, he takes a look back at 40 years of comic book reading. And so this month, it's up on the site now. He takes a look back at the comics released in February in 1979, 84, 89, 94, 99, 2004, 2009, and 
2014 and just kind of says, here's what made these comic books great. Here's what I remember about them. And here are other comics that I read. And it's a, it's a fun little thing. It's right up there in the top right corner right now. Mm. But uh, yeah, Random Access Memory for February 2019. It's a nice long look back at 40 years of comic book reading from a comic book fan. Nice. Well, all this and more. Majorspoilers.com. Major Spoilers on Twitter. Steven Schleicher, have a fantastic week. Stay hydrated. Bye. <laughs> <coughs> Captain Kipper found that uh, <coughs> animated short on YouTube for one small step. This one was my pick for um, best animated uh, short for this year. Let's so see which one after is the this? show, I put it in our Discord, but you'll have to watch it uh, afterwards. Oh yeah, this has a full. Um, this is the full thing. It's the full thing. Full seven minute, seven minute short. Oh no, I've saw this. I've seen this, but I saw this you somewhere have, okay. else. I saw it on. Um... Yeah, this is the daughter and the f dad and everything. Yes. This I yes. saw this on uh, what's the other video? It's Vimeo one night, and I thought, oh, this is awesome. And then I forgot that it would be a thing that would be up for. Now this makes sense. Okay, I have yeah. actually seen this. Carter has not seen it yet, and she's she's wary of me telling her to because she this thinks will, she knows this will gonna make, make her cry. <laughs> this will make her cry. Yeah. This made me cry. This will make her cry. Yeah, too. it's really good, you guys. This is fantastic. Yeah. I okay, now I know what this one is. This is really good. All right. Uh, where am I now? <laughs> hey, Olivia Coleman made that same noise when she was doing her acceptance. She speech. did. She made a fart noise. That was she great. She made a fart noise. I think the first fart noise at the Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> if if so, she deserves the credit. Yeah. Daryl picks up. Oh, he picked up quicker than usual. Pretty yeah. quick. Yeah. Oh, all right. quick. That's not bad, Daryl. There's Daryl at work, and here's his theme. Hold on a second. Do I have one? I don't have one. You're slipping, Roy. All right, there you go. You're slipping, Roy. Hi. <laughs> hey, it's Daryl Skeels. He is, of course, the world's renowned Trek nerd and comes on the show. We talk about Star Trek and Star Trek-related stuff. It's a tradition that goes back to very early days of the show, and we're happy to be doing it here. Here's the thing. There's not a lot going on, although we do know the names of the of the upcoming final episodes or the next seven or so, whatever it is. The next five. Five. Yeah. Uh, do we know anything about them other than the names, and have you gleaned anything from the names? No, I I, nothing jumps out as meaning anything. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, okay, this is... Oh man, it's doing it again. Hold on, my mixer sucks. Project Daedalus. I mean, that's the, the dude who uh, had the wax wings, got flew too close to the sun, so that, you know... I'm going to spray my thing. <laughs> Why aren't you working? Hold on, there Get we go. Out. There we go. My, my thing sucks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, this weekend we watched uh, Stargate, the movie, and Daryl likes that movie. Yes. We think it's okay. Uh, how, up long to have you, how long has it been since you watched yeah, it, Daryl? you need to watch it again. Well, maybe. it was in the theater, and it was <laughs> its original yeah. run. All right. Well, it's, the second half is rough, and it was then for me as well. Um, but I think it spawned one of the best uh multiple series in the history of TV science fiction. I think SG-1 and Atlantis in particular are really fantastic. Um, and SG-1 is pretty special. It's some, But it's something you never watched, right? Well, I tried to a few episodes. Okay. It just it never grabbed me. It never grabbed you. Now, this surprises me because I would put it up there. It's just me saying this, so you know everyone's got different opinions or whatever. But I would put it right up there with TNG which was kind of running at the same time, right? So they were sort of paired up. Not really. I mean, it was 97, so I guess technically they were a decade behind. But there was a period there where where there was Star Trek running together, and whether it was DS9 or whatever, you know, the show was on. Mm -hmm. And SG-1 really set itself apart, in my opinion, as a pretty special show, and it really had the Trek approach, which is every week there's a new thing to deal with, and as we deal with it, uh, we tell you how it goes and the next week it's a whole other thing but then there's also an overarching thing that you can kind of follow along to of the broader story but mostly it's a week to week kind of Star Trek approach to to the way that the, the show works and I just wanted to put out this controversial opinion I think especially saying it in front of you Mr. Trek nerd I think SG-1 rivals Star Trek like it's a, di <laughs> it's a different approach it's a different you know kind of show in some ways <laughs> But oh in boy. a lot of ways, <laughs> where's my popcorn? So, so Daryl, do you? Where's my white glove? I'm what? Throw this down. <laughs> the, what did you? What do you think about that? That thought? Now, Jeannie just admitted in the chat that she loves the movie. 
hates the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm with that. That's so, my yeah. So that might be you and Jeannie are might be uh, together at last. Is what's going on there? <laughs> but Stargate. I don't know what it was, and all. And by the way, I made uh, true on my thing. I said Friday or Sunday, Brian, as I started watching it. Like I'm back. I'm gonna watch it again. Did I'm you watching really? it again. Oh man, you beat me to it, even. Yeah, uh, I'm in the mood. Hulu, right? Yeah, Hulu and okay. uh, um, Amazon have them. They both they both have all of it, yeah. so you can get it on Prime or Hulu, but uh, uh, not Netflix currently. But it's it's just I'm so excited to get back into it to be reminded of all this stuff. There were always great crossovers including a ton of Star Trek crossovers. The Doctor from Voyager gets on there a bunch of times. Uh, you got the, uh, 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 I think Data made an appearance, uh, but not as Data, just Brent Spiner uh -huh. doing a thing. Um, they got uh, a whole bunch of people from Firefly would come on there, here and there, in the early aughts. That show went, till, that show went from 97 to 2007. It was a 10-year run, and a hell of a one. So, uh and they're movies many, too, like little separate movies, little two-hour ones as well. They're also pretty cool. Yes, what were you saying? How many? How many series have there been? Uh, so they're, the main series were SG One, and then it's it had its own spinoff movies. We'll just count the series. So SG One, Atlantis, and Universe. Those are your three series. Hmm. Universe got cut short, but I don't know. It was trying to be too much BSG. It was still cool though. I liked it. Uh, and then you got. Um, now they're working on a reboot of the film with some of the same people, including the director. And if that goes well, maybe this, maybe we get a new life into a new series. I don't know. But it's great. It's real good. And I just want to challenge Daryl Skeels, Lord of all tr things Star Trek. <laughs> Probably already has his own teleporters and freaking food replicators, for all I know. That's what the kind of nerd he is. Just, I'm just saying, move, move, move your gaze over just a little bit. <laughs> And I don't mean the two gay guys you have in your office. Your actual <laughs> eye gaze. Move your gaze this way and look at your look at this thing with new eyes and tell me what you think of it. And get past the first, you know, the first chunk of episodes are going to be the worst because they always are just like Star Trek. It's not mm -hmm. the first season's always like trying to find your feet. But I'm telling you, you're going to find something there. And then it's I think I think Atlantis was amazing. So I think Atlantis is even better. And I love that. And it was a great little rollover into that. So I'm just saying. Just Daryl, if I Oh, can... maybe I'll try it again. All right. Good luck to Listen, you. Listen, if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, Brian's going to do it. We'll do it together. Brian's going to do it, and then I promise to get caught up on Orville, the Orville, Orville. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's better and better. Yeah, I keep hearing mm -hmm. that. I yeah. don't know why I'm so late to get to it. Loving this new two-parter that they started last week. Mm-hmm. When is the last time you heard somebody say, I loved the two-parter? Because it's such right? a rarity, yeah. right? So that's that's it's high totally praise. Rare. Very high praise. Anyway, we'll check that out. Daryl, anything else in the Star Trek world you want to talk about? Uh, do you want to know the names of these episodes, or does that not No, let's <laughs> do it. Episode 7, what is it? What's it called? Light and Shadows. Okay, let's take a guess. Light and Shadows. Um, I'm going to guess there's some kind of uh, uh, light, and then there'll be shadows that it casts if it runs into objects that block the light. Wow. Yep. Yeah, I think that might be <laughs> the thing. Yeah. yeah, okay. Episode 8, what's the title there? If memory serves. All right. Memory is a young Starfleet cadet. She's working butler. her way up through. She's a butler. Yep. And they say, Memory, bring us drinks. We're having a meeting. It's very important. And then I think memory. The plot of that one is uh, uh, Burnham finds a uh, flash drive. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I like that. Wait, why would that be? Why would it be a flash memory. drive? Memory serves. Oh, memory. flash memory. A flash drive. I got it. Uh, all right. Episode nine is called what? Project Daedalus. Ah, so that's Mitch Pileggi flying a ship from Stargate Atlantis called the De <laughs> Daedalus. No, that's not it? Okay, probably not that. Um, I don't know what that would be. What do you think that is? It sounds mysterious. Uh, it where's a, a beekeeper uh, takes the wax and makes a spaceship. Okay, I like it. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, sure. What's, what's episode 10? That's the Red Angel. I know what that one is. Yeah, That's, we know what that one is. I yes, think. it's We've, an angel with a bad rash, like a groin, <laughs> some kind of unexplained groin rash called the red angel, right? No? What do you think it is? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Well, is, there yeah. is a, if, if you've been watching the latest season, there's a red angel. It's a through line. Yeah, there's a through line for this season. Oh, I haven't seen any of that yet. Angel. I haven't watched yet. I haven't started, so i got to get started. And then Perpetual Infinity for episode 11. That's kind of redundant, isn't it? It's very redundant, yes. Perpetual infinity. That implies that you could stop perpetuating infinity. 
Perpetual ongoing infinity. Yeah. Forever, <laughs> nonstop, perpetual <laughs> infinity. <laughs> I don't know what that's like. All right. Well, uh, there you go. Seven through 11, you now. Was it, how many episodes total this year? Is that 11? Is that Four, it? 14. 14. It's going to be 14. All right. Well, more titles to come then. Mm -hmm. uh, another news packed episode of The Trek Nerd. Uh, and then, of course, on uh, This Week in Trek, you guys talk about this stuff. So uh, what's up this week? Probably a review of the most recent episode and something else? Uh, yeah. And uh, a really bad TOS episode that I don't remember the name of. Whom's Gods Destroy? That's it. Whom's Whom Gods Destroy? Whom Whom God's... Gods... What, was the plot? what was the plot of that one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know that, that uh, GIF file that goes around where Captain Kirk is pounding on the floor? Yes, I love that yeah. one. That's, that's in that. That's, Isn't it, that's that him one. where he gets, uh, it's a it's not him, someone takes over his body or something, or it's a clone of him or something? What's the deal? It's uh, uh, Garth from, what is it, Garth from somewhere. Anyway, he, <laughs> it's oh. the Insane Asylum episode. Oh, okay, so it's Garth from somewhere, got it. And then he takes so, but he he takes over Kirk's body or something. No, he he's a shape changer person. And do a ver he's another version of Kirk though. So there's two Kirks walking around the ship, right? For well, not on the ship, but on okay. the planet, there's a couple of Kirks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Garth Brooks starring in this fine episode. <laughs> All makes sense now. All Garth right. Of Garth, Garth yeah. of Izar. Garth of Izar. I like Garth of Izar. Garth of Izar. Oh. Where's the alligator shirt? <sighs> Garth of Izar. You're thinking of Izod. <laughs> Garth of Izod would be great. That would be great. All right. Daryl Skeels, everybody. The Trek Nerd on Twitter. This Week in Trek at thisweekintrek.com. Daryl, have a fantastic week. Gaga. -ga -ga. There you go. All right. Off he goes. Gaga. -ga. Ga -ga. A reminder if you want to come see us in Vegas in April, you got to get your tickets, son. They are going fast. Uh, yeah. We're getting to that point where it's like, ooh, I don't know how many more of these we have. So if you're coming, please come. Uh, go to vivatmsvegas.com. Get your tickets. There's information about signing up for the Overwatch uh, tournament we're having on Thursday. Brian mm -hmm. is finalizing venue stuff for Friday and Saturday. Saturday also, yeah. I like where that's going, by the way. I think it sounds yes. right. Oh, man. There's and a, I have a, and I have an idea. I'll talk to you off the air about uh, Saturday that uh, T and I came up with over Mexican food on Saturday night that I just love. All right, lots of farting or something involved. Mexican lots food. of farting. Great. Yes. Good. So that's uh, vivatmsvegas.com. If you have not yet done it, you can also find links at frogpants.com and on Twitter and everywhere else. And every show post that we do has a link to that site. So go get your tickets. Lock in your cool swag. There's a video helping explain things where you buy the tickets. If you want just the swag and you can't come, that's an option too. We've covered it all, man. Mm -hmm. It's all so, there. All there. Get it going. All right. Uh, quick email from Jeff May, who wrote in, says fundraising with the wife or for the wife for a great cause. Hey, Scott and Brian, on March 13th this year, my beautiful wife will be shaving her head for the world's greatest shave, an event created to support the uh, the fight against leukemia and other bloodborne cancers. It would be uh, mean a lot for us for if you would share her donation page and if any tad poolers could spare a dollar for a great cause that would be amazing. Thanks for everything you guys do. This is from Perth, Western Australia. Again, Jeff, and he sent this link. Uh, so write this link down, everybody. Bit.ly slash 2SP8SNE. I'll repeat it. Bit yeah, plus caps matter in this. Because oh, do they matter on Bitly? I think they do. That's so dumb. Here, I'm gonna, I know. I'm going to try it. I would say, yeah, I'll copy and paste it in the chat room, but man, uh, you know, have a have a real, uh, have a memorable. Uh... <laughs> it's hard to, Bitly sucks if that's what they make you do. That's dumb. I hate that. Yeah. Also, Bitly's slow. Oh, there it is. Okay, I found it. Um, you can also look for, uh, uh, let's see, leukemiafoundation.org has it there as well. So you can go find that. Uh, but the uh, yeah, go go check it out. That's an awesome thing, I think. And and that she has a lot of really nice hair, and I'm gonna be sad to see it go. But it's for a good cause, so go do that. Uh, thanks again, and I'll repeat this: bitly or bit.ly slash two capital S lowercase p eight s capital N lowercase e. Oh, and that s is also lowercase. All right, uh, that's the end of that. How about we do one of these deals? What are we doing here? Oh yeah, we're gonna play a mashup. Mashup 
1655 through 1658. This is called Huge Hurricane. And I'll play it for you now. Brian, you ready for this? I'm ready. All oh, right. I'm ready. All right. Hey, hey, what's the matter with the head? They want to go to Machi, Machu Picchu. Or Ma Ma Machu Picchu. Machu, yeah. Machu, P Machu Picchu. Nope, there's no end. No end. Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. Their topic today comes to us from TMS, TMS mashups. <laughs> Can't speak TMS, today. TMS. TMS mashups, Monty Penny. Beep, 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 beep. This is incorrect, incorrect. Like your Stone Temple Pilots and your Allison Change. But Allison Change. Allison Chains. <laughs> Good lord. Olaf Pooley. Olaf Pooley? Olaf Pooley. What was his deal? What did he play? Did he play a snowman? Snowman. <laughs> he never liked the snow anyway. Because your head is so massive, it would not fit a Burger King clown. It's true. Where are the drugs? Yeah. You should. All right, put an exacto knife in his leg. <laughs> Brain. Sucker his uh, friend. Sucker. Sucker, bring a friend. Sucker. 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 I ran into a stop sign and my clothes fell off. I don't have my ID for obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Slippery. No. Slippery. Slippery dick. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Your name is stupid. Bourbon chocolate cake honey bush. That was oh. my stripper name in high school. I don't know if anyone knew that. Just the honey bush, and then you added on those other names to. Oh, yeah, no, that was for bigger tips. That was later, right. In the beginning, it was just honey bush. I'd put that in my mouth. Slap into a slim. Snap into a slim gym. <laughs> snap into, I've got the baton. 87. Meet me over the halfway top. across the sky. Who <laughs> knows? Oh, no. Super my genitals. Huge. It's the biggest scorpion. Best scorpion. <laughs> a lot of scorpions have told me. Yeah. To you get over here. My favorite band is the scorpions. I love scorpions. They told me to rock. They rocked me. They rocked me like a hurricane. <laughs> quite obviously. Quite, quite, you know. Hurricane. Global warming. Total hoax. A lot of scorpions out there. Yeah. <laughs> that might be my favorite Trump run we've done. That was a good that one. That was really funny, yeah. Uh, nice one, Jamie. Well done. Jamie at TMS Mashups on Twitter. Patreon.com slash TMS Mashups. He does great work. And tomorrow, you'll get to hear me in the first clip-filled episode of Screams from my time with Outlast 2 so far. That's nice. a scary video. I watched some of that. That uh, That's some scary stuff. I don't like those uh, backwoods, you know, flannel-wearing zombie dudes walking around with glowing eyes and pitchforks. Yep, and there's all these, like, religious stuff in it, and it's freakish. It's real weird, that game. But, um... Mm -hmm. We'll continue that tomorrow as well, uh, live here on the on the uh, stream. All right. Yes, Nick scared me in Outlast. He already did. He already came in there and got me. Kim got me mm -hmm. real bad. Just people leave me alone when I play those games. So I'm going to put my headphones on, and you all stay out of here and not poke me while I'm in the middle of playing the scariest thing I've ever had on my computer. Okay? All right. Hey, right. that's it for the show. Uh, thanks, everybody. Patreon.com slash TMS is where you can support the show. We really appreciate those who do. Thanks to everybody who's switching over to the level that has the monthly T selection. Yeah. Uh, that's go going great, and we're happy to see you guys over there. Um, if you're not sure what we're talking about, previous episode, we had Gwen on. We talked about these teas. Yesterday, I ate, let's see. Oh, no, it was, I'm sorry. It was this Thursday. morning. Thursday. Well, this morning I had another one. It was called. Oh. Oh, it's one of the uh, there will be dungeons teas, but it's a uh, it's a matcha tea, like uh, super green oh, tea. Oh, love the matchas! So good, dude. I think I'm gonna have a matcha this afternoon. As a matter mm. of fact, it's a ma matcha effect. Just the right everything. It was so good. It had all these berries in it. Oh, anyway, uh, PhoenixPearlTea.com if you want to see all those selections. But uh, big thanks to everybody who is supporting us on Patreon at that mm -hmm. level. We appreciate it. Uh, we are at frogpants.com slash TMS, where you'll find links to everything you need. You can contact us there. You can leave us voicemails, 801-471-0462, and lots of other stuff. So check those out. And now, I hand the baton back to Brian, where he will mispronounce a thing while he tells us about a song. Go. That's correct. No, I'm, 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 leaving, I'm leaving the baton with you. Right. Tim W. wrote in and said, it's my, quote, more than three years older than Scott and Brian birthday, unquote, on February 25th. That's today. I thought I'd take the opportunity to introduce the tadpole to this breathtaking performance by Sheila Atom 
of Bob Dylan's uh, tight connection to my heart in the musical Girl from the North Country. This production was staged in London in 2017, and Sheila Atom won an Olivier Award, which is the UK equivalent of a Tony for her performance. Sheila Atom was uh, recently announced as a member of the main cast in the upcoming Game of Thrones spinoff show, The Long Night, so you'll get to see her there. It might be pronounced Adam, Sheila Adam, or Sheila Atom, so who knows? Maybe I, maybe I do have that baton. I don't know. Mm. Um, Anyway, she's great. And the video, obviously you won't see the video when you hear the song. The video of her performance is worth looking up because it is really, really cool. However, the album came out in 2017. It was the Girl from the North Country soundtrack. Uh, Sheila Adam and the original London cast performing Bob Dylan's Tight Connection to My Heart. Oh, All right, that'll do it. Thanks, everybody, for being here. See you soon. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. We also saw this dog with a banana. Great. Mm, sure. Great.